such a nice introduction and so nice to be back in Manchester and so nice to follow that beautiful harp which was incredible, not at all anhedonic as well, may I say. Um, the first poem that I will read is called Netherlands. Um, it went through one draft downstairs in the cafe here, so I thought it was appropriate to begin with. Um, it's from a story told to me by a woman called Anne that I met down in um, Somerset. Uh, I say it's from a story. It's true to her story for about one line, line and a half, and then after that, I take my liberties. Netherlands. I was any three-year-old, a dream of curiosity. If you see an open door, you go through. That's what doors are. An inconstancy of right and wrong, of action and its kinds of truth, had inhabited my vacation head that holiday, the Netherlands, 1952. And the bright suburban street's nearest door was ajar, and my tread still absent soft enough to pass my off-guard parent, and I was in. I remember a bed and solider even than its dark wood frame the astonishment at the eyes on me of the woman half amid the sheets, small and dense, a surprise of curves. I've spent such heavy hours since retreading these curving streets of the words I've hung on every memory I've had of those wavering Netherlands, wholly incomplete by now with passing through and through of that Dutch red half hoping still to find a heart of flesh among the empty sheets of beds, the empty beds of memory, the rolling Dutch for bed. Um, and skipping between cafes in Manchester, um, the, the next poem is two translations, two versions of a, a poem by the Greek poet Kavafi, C.P. Kavafi. Um, the first one is set in Alexandria, and the second one is set in Chris Christie's Bistro over in the university. Um, your room at midnight was suddenly. It's after um, a poem that's usually translated as titled The God Abandons Antony. Your room at midnight was suddenly. One. Rich with the feeling of your hearing an unseen procession, a procession rich itself with the strains of its beauty, a low darkness of voices. But now is no time to mourn your loss, your departing fortune, a life's work spoiling before your eyes, a host of plans proving illusory. As if you were prepared ever, as if you were brave, say farewell to the Alexandria that is leaving. And further, do not allow yourself the lie of having dreamt that your ears fail or your draining mind. Do not sully this moment's song with the baseness of your desire for stability. But as if you were prepared ever, as if you were prepared, as if you were brave, say farewell to the Alexandria that is leaving. Move steady to the window, as one given for a city such as this, this hugeness. Move to the window and beat with the pulse of feeling, a feeling far off from the pitched reed and entreaty of cowardice. No, listen as a fatal delicacy to that voice, that mass of beauty, that strange and passing procession off in the distant absence of the Alexandria you are anyway losing. Your room at midnight was suddenly two. On the table, because God knows I'm no romantic, but I want you. And underneath that, we sip our coffee, and your eyes are darker than any history or coffee, than any Greek coffee ever was, and hold the gloss of immense depth only such darkness has. God knows I want you to the point of shucking the woman I love, our house, the home we built so slowly. And there is a procession off stage which accompanies the upward swing of your eyes, harmonizes the argument for discord, and you're explaining in an almost unbroken English a poem from the Greek of Gavafi. I don't know it. As if I were a coward, I keep quiet. 
On the table of my mind, I mean, your room, hopeless coward as I never thought I was, hopeless neighbor of these strains of romance language, the names for your description, the country my instinct will use to define you. Close as I get to the classicism of your Greek hearts, the close Doric order of your form. I don't know what it is which is leaving, only the sweet draw of its pain as it goes from me. Um, the next poem is called Klishmaklava, it's, um, which is a word that needs an explanation and probably an apology. It's one of those words you get in poems sometimes. Um, so this is, this is a poem about the kind of words that you get in poems, if it's possible to use that. Klishmaklava. The FEQs for match of the day actually include why is my team always on last? This is sad, this fact, and it's a sad shuffle to work out what to do now I have it. For something must be done with the cast of characters it so consummately summons. It refers so accurately and is so clearly and necessarily untrue. I love you, but I wish you wouldn't use the word snallygaster so much. It's funny, but won't people start throwing things soon? C.F. Clever, and also Grace. Your alabaster skin, your lined face, the poorly ruled margins of your intricate shoreline, your side's home shirt, redesigned every season, but referring persistently and essentially to a departed original. The sky is an aleatory description of a sky, the kind of fruit salad oranges and corals you wouldn't believe were you not right, right here. And I was going to finish with um, Beauties of the Northwest, which uh, was mentioned in the introduction uh, as a kind of northern Manchester poem, but um, on the megabus on the way down, um, during which time my poems got covered in a, a mysterious megabus liquid, which I'm trying not to think about too much. Um, I was reading a book uh, by Nikolai Gogol, and uh, I came across the phrase, ha I was talking about the road and being on the road, um, and he said, he bursts out, how many wonderful designs and poetic reveries have come to birth in you? And um, I thought I'd read, I'll, I'll finish with a poem about that experience of traveling to a place, being on the road on the way to a place, in this case, the seaside. And getting there and feeling like you need to find the words to describe the place, any place. It's called themselves. I have learned the words curlicue, arabesque, crackler, and I have done my best to feel that well-spoken weft, etc., beneath the skin of things, with ketamines or caffeines mingling with the bloodstream I have long been shifting, twice changing between Liverpool Street, between St. Pancras and here. All preparation dissolves like cardboard-minded hangover morning vitamin supplement at this sudden coast, the mist-hung edges of this shingle beach, its pitchless singing, its pebble rattle intensifying to the static hiss of unthinkable numbers, this vast variegate of stone being dragged across itself by the persistent knowing drugged retreat of the waves and the gentle waves patina, spindrift, astringent, and the waves. The vast multiplication table of its rattle. The mingling of the symbols for stones with the symbol for seawater rinsing the two. The three inch give of a tortoiseshell of shingle underfoot. The way every rounded collateral pressure of stone on deeper stone comes up through the shoe soles, the soles of the feet up through some rail cartographer's dream of nerves, up to the neck and the graze there of the salt air on the tongue, scouring off the need for words and a breath after that, the words.